What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're playing Mouth of Sauron in Historic Brawl. This is one of the Lord of the Rings uh, commanders that came out not that long ago. Um, a lot of legendary cards in that set. Not all of them are good <laughs> commanders because there was kind of a legendary themes matter, but some of them are interesting builds like this one, so I wanted to give them a crack. Uh, this is a 5 mana Demir commander, human advisor, 3-4. When the Mouth of Sauron enters the battlefield, target player mills three cards. Then amass Orcs X, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in that player's graveyard. So, you know, not a tremendously overwhelming commander, but, you know, it ETBs and target player, you know, our opponent, mills three cards. And then we make, hopefully, a big creature. Let's say they have five instants and sorceries in their graveyard. We make a 5-5. Five, five. So that's okay, right? That's okay value. Um, where it gets really good is if we build the deck around a mill, and we before we play the Mouth of Sauron, we try to mill them a lot, and then late in the game we play Mouth of Sauron, it comes down, we make a 2020 or something like that. Um, that's where the card starts to become much more powerful. Um, and then we can have effects like Thassa Deep Dwelling, so we can bounce it each turn, uh, flicker it, right and um get the effect on our each end step every turn so we make a giant creature and we mill our opponent um if we have shoulder in the deck right we can all the creature cards in their graveyard in the chapter three after we flip shouldered because flipping it won't be hard in this deck since we built it around mill uh chapter three will put all creature cards from all graveyards in the battlefield under our control uh breach the multiverse same kind of idea each player mills 10 cards, and for each player, choose a creature or planeswalker the card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards in the battlefield under your control. So, this is not our direct win con. We just built the deck around making the ETB of this card good, right? It's additional value. And the deck is just... It, it, it's, it's, it's a... I would say, like, it's a mid-range deck. It's not aggro. It's not full control, although it's Demir, right? But it's not full control. I didn't build it like with nothing but control pieces. I built it around mill and control a little bit of control, a little bit of mill, card draw, um, and you know, just kind of like Demir staples like time warp and children and you know both shoulders, I guess. Um, so an ideal ideal board state that we're in, we have like mesmeric orb down. Whenever a permanent comes in, uh, I'm sorry. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that player, that permanent's controller mills a card. Right. Okay. So this affects both players, but since we're a Demir deck, we're playing at instant speed. So we get to a point in the game where we have like I don't know six seven mana. We have mesmeric orb down. Maybe we have. Um, Teferi's Tutelage down, or Psychic Corrosion, they kind of do the same thing. Whenever we draw a card, each opponent mills two cards. And we're in a, a board state where we play draw go. Um, we have a bunch of removal spells and counter spells in the deck. And the opponent has to keep playing stuff in order to try to beat us. But by doing so, they're hurting themselves because of Miss Mirror Orb. And then every time we draw a card, they mill two cards. So we're just in this like state of milling them out. And then once we have a clear board or a safe passage for our commander, we play the Mouth of Sauron. We have a gigantic creature on the board. Maybe we can flicker it a bunch. Um, you know, draw a bunch of cards with Magic Mirror or the One Ring. Uh, mill them out while simultaneously having a board of creatures. So that's what I mean by mid range, like. The deck doesn't have one designed win con. The idea is to like take advantage of creatures like Relic Golem, which is only three mana, and it can't attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So this is a three mana six six that will basically be able to play, you know, on curve, and they'll pretty much always have eight or more cards in their graveyard because of the way we built this deck. Um, so we're ju we're just trying to take advantage of stuff like that. Um, King Narfi's Betrayal, each player mills four cards, then you may exile a creature or planeswalker card from each graveyard, and then for the next two chapters we can cast those cards. Um, so we're, we're j it's like mill value, <laughs> right? Um, so anyway, 
I don't know if this will actually get us wins. Um, there's an argument to be said that you should either make this uh, all about mill or all about control with trying to just make this an end game win con like you know their you know their deck is almost all gone and you know this comes down and makes it comes down as like a 40 40 or something like that depending on how many instants and sorceries are in the graveyard um that's all good and fine and you're more than welcome to build the deck that way but i've noticed a theme with building historic brawl decks that either like if i think about just trying to get wins then i gotta make the deck either extreme aggro or extreme control and so i'm trying to not fall into that trap of only building decks to get wins i'm trying to build decks that have synergies and are fun right so if you want to build this deck to be highly competitive then you're probably going to want to go the demir extreme control route just because these colors lend to that play style and it probably will be effective but if you want to have fun and play some of these quirky cards you can you can build the deck this way so let's see if we can actually make the deck work that's sort of the fun in itself, is just trying to make the deck work. <laughs> um, if you like this kind of content, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure we're clicking on the right deck. I'm infamous for clicking on the wrong deck before we go in the queue. <clears throat> if you like this kind of t content, and like I said, you're new to the channel, you know, so hit subscribe. Become part of the become part of the channel. Helps me out. Helps me make more content. Like I said, I'm not trying to be the sweatiest content creator. I'm trying to make stuff that's fun, you know? Um, this is a rough deck to go against for our deck. Um, enchantment. Well, we have River's Rebukes. So that's good against them. But enchantments is something that Demir really struggles to remove, and their entire deck is enchantments. Like, literally every card in their deck is an enchantment. Lands and enchantments. We have Leyline, so that's awesome. I mean, this is such a good hand, and we get to go first. Uh, if we're going to win this game, this is the hand we have to keep. Two counter spells, a way to steal their stuff. We have we can do anything we want at flash speed, including River's Rebuke. Uh, I mean, pfft. all right. Yeah, we'll try. We will try. Yep. Get the tap lane out of the way. It's more valuable as a land this early in the game than it is a counter spell. Okay. Um. Another tap land. Let's just play that. Say go. That's a great draw. Um. Since they have double blue up, I'm gonna put this down. On, um, I think it's a human, right? Human, yeah. So now it at least can't be countered. I don't know if they run counter spells, but you never know in Historic Brawl. Is this worth playing right here, or is it better to hold up Memory Labs? I think it's better to hold up these. This is better when they have stuff in their graveyard. Plus it mills us too. Okay, well... <laughs> I don't know. Is there like a middle option? Sure. So, opponent ran out of patience against the Demir deck with the lane line. I kind of get it. But uh, we weren't taking that long, so... Thin skin, opponent. Thin skin. So, yeah, this deck, uh, this deck dunks on Enchantment Tribal, obviously. Omnath, okay. This is the elemental Omnath. There's so many Omnaths I can't remember. Uh, enters the battlefield to deal damage to any target equal to the number of elementals you control. Yeah, elemental tribal. And then landfall. Basically, if they have uh, eight or more lands, they draw a card and they put a plus one, plus one counter on an elemental they control. So yeah, elemental tribal with the added benefit of card draw. This is awesome. I don't think... Teamer has a way of dealing with enchantments. I guess... Well, especially indestructible enchantments. Yeah. Probably not. Okay. Yeah, this is a good hand. This is a good hand. So, how do we play this? Uh, turn one. Fetch. 
go get uh, what is the name of the land? Is this watery grave? Okay, yeah, the shock land. Uh, tapped. We don't have anything to do with the mana, so we might as well not take the damage. So yeah, this card plus this card is a lot of value. Nice. Um, we'll just do it like this. Rampy ramp. Next turn we'll probably do this guy. This is a great card in the deck, just very synergistic. It mills them on the front side and the back side. It's a, you know, it can become a gigantic creature. They milled themselves, which is awesome. Helping us mill, so... There's one creature in the graveyard. That's good for later. Let's just get... Um, Fossa down. Enter the battlefield, mill three cards. You may put a land card from among the cards, mill this way into your hand. So it's just, it's an elemental. I mean, that's the main purpose of in the deck. I don't think they have graveyard recursion synergies. I'd be sort of surprised, but this is mainly in the deck just because it's a two mana elemental. That's a good card. Um, we don't have another land, so we're not going to go for mouth here. So what has like maximum value? Can't attack or block unless they have... So this can't attack or block until they have eight cards. So we can do both of these. We can do you and the backside of this. I don't think blinking this does anything, but like, why not, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't do anything. So they're gonna kill my dude. That's fine. Lay line is good. Um, we really need car. Well, we really need lands. They have eight cards, right? So this is a six six. So this gums up the battlefield for a while. They don't have nearly enough elementals to blow this up. If they attack all, it tells me that they have some elementals. Because Well, they'd have to have like a flash speed elemental in order to make that kind of combat trick work. But we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Frost links, they're gonna tap down my guy. Okay, they're going pretty aggro. A land would be super nice. Man, we're just not trying lands. I mean, I think we have to Teferi here. And we gotta draw into some lands. That is not a land. At least we get to blink that, so now it's a blocker again. But they're gonna want to get rid of this. Shia, which is also an elemental. Okay. Resolve. So they can do five damage. Is that right? No. Oh, it's only when this enters the battlefield. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so they take a turn off here. So we can... Draw a discard in response. A good really, a tap land? A tap land. We... I 
guess we can play it and try to survive. Um, I think, I think we're, yeah, this is not a good counter in this situation. So they can attack. They can attack if they want to. Um, yeah, no blocks. I'd rather keep the creature as a blocker. Wow, I think we're gonna get mana screwed out of this game. So can they kill me next turn? We have to block this and then five, nine, 17. Yeah, I mean, we die no matter what, right? That's a bummer. We just didn't draw. <laughs> yeah, we had all the pieces and we just couldn't draw the fifth land. That's a massive bummer. If we play this, do we get devotion to blue? Is less than five. One. Yeah, we need a lot more devotion than that. Alright. Cool. Well, I mean, if you play non ramping colors like um, Demir, then you're down to be mana screwed at least once. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Any car, any deck with green just flies ahead with the ramp, but anything that doesn't, any uh, guild or set of colors that doesn't have ramp in its colors um, falls behind an historic brawl unless you're hitting your land drops every turn and we missed a couple turns with land drops so that was no bueno otherwise I think we had the pieces to fight that fight but we just I mean you can't you can't play the game if you don't have mana so not a lot to analyze there Uh, I don't know what this card does. Mono white. Two mana. Sacrifice an artifact. Switch your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value put into the battlefield and shuffle. Oh, that doesn't seem broken at all. Huh. Mono white artifacts. I might have to build that deck. That looks cool. Activate as a sorcery though. So we can just kill it before. Oh, and we have Miss Mirror Corb. Okay, but we only have one land. Come on, deck. This is an awesome hand and one land. Ugh. Do we fall into the trap and try to draw into an additional land? Because we literally can't do anything unless we draw an additional land. Once we draw a second land, we can play Mindstone and we have three mana. And we're okay. I think we take our chance against this deck. It's a little slow. We get to go first, so we have we have at least one turn of, you know, dirtling. Well, that's a good card to have. Um, that's a good draw, is what I'm trying to say. I think we do this now because we want to hit the land drop, and we don't. <laughs> well, now we're brainstorm locks. So we've essentially lost the game. Yeah, I'm just going to scoop it up. Because <laughs> for the next three turns, we're going to draw a non-land. So, we are now four turns behind with no land. Yikes. Well, I mean... Sometimes you got to risk it. We can thank the arena gods for giving me a one lander with no land in sight. <laughs> uh, Selenzia training, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one green and white humorous human soldier creature token with training. And training is whenever this creature attacks with another creature greater with a great power, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Okay, so probably 
it's just typical Silenzia plus one plus one counter nonsense. This is a garbage hand. We have no blue source. We can Tails in their commander and kill it and play a blocker. And we have card draw. We just need more lands. We have three lands technically though. So I think this is keep. Keeper. Uh, let's play the tap land first. Um, you. And pass. And we have the tails end up. Okay, Shipwreck Marsh. Um, let's get you down. Let's start the milling. Discard a card. I don't really want to discard any of these. Probably you. It's a good card for later, but not for now. Nice. That's a good one to get rid of. Actually, that's two this early in the game that are good, good, good to get rid of. Just like in Duelist. Maybe you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, draw a card, right? Let's just see what that does. Okay, how many cards? Four. Um, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on another permanent you control, if it's the first time, put a plus one plus one counter on this. Um, I think this needs to die because it's card draw for them. This is instant speed. Yeah. Full control. Okay. So that means they can't... Put a plus one plus one counter on this this turn, so is it better to kill this instead? I don't know what's better to get rid of. This makes a wide board. So we're gonna take four here. Let's see what they do. Well, their whole deck is built around this, so I think we gotta get rid of this. I would like to get rid of this, but... I just, uh... I think we'll draw into more stuff, is what I'm trying to say. So they got, what, six cards? How many instants and sorceries, though? One. So we can make a mill... Another... Three. Or we can play Tezzeret and plus one, and it doesn't look like they can kill it, but they can add a plus one plus one counter and kill it. We can play. Wait, how many is it? Six? Um. Yeah, I mean, let's just get this down as a blocker make a creature. We are, we'll get two blockers technically. So now we have a 2-2. Two, two. So we have five power. It's, it's decent. Then Relic Golem is turned on, so we'll have a 6-6. Six, six. Then we'll have blockers for Tezzeret, and we can really start milling them out.
they're attacking, so I, I wonder if they have a combat trick. Well, I'm definitely killing you. Do you have a way to instant speed blow it up? Sure. That's fine. Yeah, remove perpetual effects. Okay. So we can play you. And play you. No attacks. So now we have 8 power. If we get this to pop, we will obviously draw 7, but we'll mill them 14. They play their commander. Okay. They can attack if they want. Into the 6-6. Six, six. Nice. I thought we already cast this. Oh, no, we cast Infernal Grasp. Okay. Um, how much mana we have? Yeah. Okay, we need the card draw, so let's do it like this. I have suffered and toiled. I am owed victory. We can make our midnight clock into a 4-4 four, four if we need to. I don't think we need to do that this turn, though. Need results. Keep working. Oh, these are great. Um, discard an artifact. This is an artifact, so we could keep these. Um, decline. I think we get rid of you. And... You? Mill them four. Put down another blocker. I think we cast this as a land. Don't want to miss land drops. Attack in. They can kill it if they want to. They do not. Two cards left in hand. Doubling season. That's pretty good for them. But nothing... This has trample, but this does not. They're going to attack me. Interesting. Um, yeah. No problem. My next breakthrough is close. Okay, is there anything in here that I'd want? Hardened scales is decent. Heroic intervention is pretty good. Poison dart frog is a death toucher. Okay. Some some stuff. So what does this say? Each player moves four cards and you make exile a creature or planeswalker card from each graveyard. And then next two turns we can cast those cards. So this takes all of our mana. I think they have a ton of stuff in here, but I don't know how many instants and sorceries they have. One, two, 
Three. Not a lot. So we can make a three, three and do nothing else. Do they have anything that says destroy target enchantment? time um yeah six life we can't even really play this okay I think we die no matter what, right? <laughs> that was probably the wrong play. If they attack all, we die. Yeah. GG. I don't think there was a way out of that in that situation, but... Maybe. feel like we were close to having a way out of that. We really didn't draw anything relevant with Tezzeret, which was unfortunate, because we were drawing extra cards each turn. I think I think them having almost no instants and sorceries in their deck really kind of messed with our game plan. It was all, like, silly little creatures and stuff. If, if they had, like, even half of their pile was instant sorceries, we would have made, like, a 20-20, and then it would have been a completely different game. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets this creature, copy that spell for each other creature you control. That spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those. Oh my goodness. So this is... I know what they're going to do with this. They're going to use, like, the cantrip ones. Like, target creature gains trample. Draw a card. And then they're going to target all their creatures. So they're going to draw a ton of cards. That's scary. Um, cut down. Does that work on this creature? Nope. Never does. Wash away does though. One, two, two lands. Um, yeah, we can't keep this. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Orgage Bowmasters, I guess. We technically have Necropotent's mana and Shieldred. So red decks have a hard time with Shieldred. This is a little awkward because we have nothing to do with it, but all right, we will try with Necropotence. <sighs> it's tempting to just scoop, but since we've lost so much already this game, I'm going to try to fight it for the viewers. <laughs> if I was not recording, I would just scoop because turn one Ragavan is almost impossible to, to race. That would have been a nice card to draw. So thank you for stealing it and exiling it. Super nice of you. Okay. Well, we can ambush Ragavan this turn. They can't cast their commander, which I think they were depending on. So that's nice. Oh my goodness, tap lands. Um, we can memory lapse their commander as well. So I think we just... Yeah, no. Let's... 
do it like this. And pass. They're keeping this treasure for the to have four mana to cast their commander. Uh-huh. Okay. We're gonna gain life back with Shieldred, so we're not in dire trouble here. I guess they're not gonna cast that. Put it back on their deck. They can't cast it now because they don't have a land drop. We can start milling them. But I think we just do this. I think they're going to have a really hard time dealing with this card on two mana. Yeah. Oh, red players. Shieldred is the bane of your existence. <laughs> We're not, we're not really getting any games where I can get into a groove with this deck, which is, you know, it's a, it's a common thing in the Stork Brawl. A Stork Brawl doesn't really play like Commander, where you have freedom to kind of like let your deck express itself. It's like, it's too sweaty, you know, people are trying to win more than they are trying to play janky stuff and have fun. I try to play janky stuff and have fun. Which I think is why you guys watch the channel. Not necessarily for like the the most efficient tier zero deck, you know. But it is a bummer that uh, there's like no breathing room for Jank. Even in the uh, 100 card singleton format. You'd think this would be the format for it. Um, uh, well, this can go get um, a dual land. So this isn't completely awful. We have two counter spells that get rid of Sauron, and a removal spell, and the one ring, and a third land. Uh, yeah, it's awkward, but we'll keep it. Uh, this is why we keep this card in the deck. We get to go first, too, which is huge. This is an amazing commander. I have a video on it. Actually, I think I have a couple videos on it. Probably my favorite Grixis commander ever printed. It's just so good. And that's saying something, because I like Grixis. Um, we can do this on their end step. Don't want to give them any information. Okay. Yep. Since this is an island, we can go fetch it. If you're not familiar with how... Island cycling works. It's not basic island cycling. It's any island. Um, yeah, let's pay the two life and have the counters up. Depending on how they built the deck, we could be in a counter war. Is this worth counterspelling? Probably not. It's tempting because it's funny, but it's probably not a good play. Um, yeah, let's play this tapped. Don't take the free. We can just pass. Keep the shields up. Four mana. Cloud key. Choose an artifact, creature, instant of sorcery spell. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. It's pretty good. I think it's worth counterspelling. If they have a spell pierce, then that's fine. It's out of their hand. Swan song, sure. I wonder what they're going to choose. Artifact. Artifact? Are they an artifact deck? I don't know. That's a, that's a weird one. Um, one, two, three, four. Let's one ring. While they're tapped out so they can't counter it. They could have swan song this. So I'm kind of glad that we pushed the issue with the counter spell. And no, I guess they couldn't have swan song this. I'm sorry. This isn't an artifact. 
It's enchantment, not artifact. But I'm sure they have other counters in their deck if they're running this. <laughs> sure. Alright. And so it begins. Okay, but this is a deck that's going to have a lot of instants and sorceries, so... Oh, they have protection. That's right, that's right. That's right. Try to keep the pressure on them so that this one ring kills them in the end. That's the goal. It's just a 2-2, two -two, but it's going to add up. Draw two. So they have two. What does this need? Seven. So this will get them to six. We already have enough removal spells. Um, since this costs seven, we can probably get this guy down and tap out. <laughs> Did I read that wrong? Is it creatures? And there are no creatures. Wow. Put that, clip that. <laughs> That's a typical punt from me. I thought it was uh, cards in graveyard, not creature cards in graveyard. Womp womp. Let's put an end step stop. We're gonna make them mill a card with. Well, okay, there you go. Never mind. So we'll just do it anyway. Get a card in the graveyard. Cool. They're losing more and more life. Okay. What are they doing? Oh yeah, this is really good with Sauron. Uh, my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're tapped out. Um, too bad we didn't draw a land. Draw three. Of course now we do. Human? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They need another land, but they probably have it or they can get it with the one ring. Um, oh, we should have ruined crab and then fable passage, but I guess we can do that next turn. If we do this, that's all our mana. So we don't want to do that. We really want to hold this up for when they play Sauron again. Are we going to discard the hand size? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, but let's get the Ruin Crab down. And if they want to use removal or something on it, that's fine. They're taking four a turn, two from this and two from this. So they got to stop the bleeding at some point. And 
offer you can't refuse. Okay, so resolve. Uh, full control, resolve. Oh yeah, what is the ward on this? Sacrifice a legendary artifact or a legendary creature. So we could sacrifice our one ring next turn after we draw a bunch of cards. It's probably worth it. Pass. Pass. My turn. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're taking a lot of damage here. So let's ruin crab them. We don't want to start taking four a turn. That's going to be bad. I don't think it matters, but since every card in her hand has black mana symbols, let's go grab a swamp, mill them again. Let's draw four. Oh man, that's tempting, but it's better. We we gotta kill the uh, we gotta kill Sauron. So. This is a non-artifact creature. Okay, let's just do it like this. Yes. Resolve. Resolve. Sack the one ring. Breach? Oh, do we breach them? What could we get? Not a lot. Right now, just this. And Orcish Bowmasters. Orcish Bowmasters turns off their Sauron. Straight up. Do they have any... Legendary? No, they don't. If we do this... Wait, why didn't it die? Didn't we kill it? Wait, what? Didn't we kill this? I'm so confused. Oh, because it has a counter on it. Mother. Oh my god. I knew I should have used go for the throat. Fuck. Okay. Um. Well, we got to do this now so that we can target it next turn. We don't have a choice. Yeah, it's a big boy. But we also have a big boy. Inquisition. Auto pay. Yep, resolve. Yeah, no thanks to that. And pass. Wow, we got met, we got absolutely hosed by our um, heartless act because it can't target a creature with counters on it. Oh my goodness! Reading the card explains the card. Reading the card explains the card. Well, why is it getting... Wait, hold on. Why is it getting counters? What is putting counters on it? No, really, what's putting counters on this card? Meat Hook Massacre. For four. Well, they drew the answer. But we can just play Mouth again. So do we care? Is it worth spell piercing? They have the mana to pay for it. 
but it makes sure they can't do anything else this turn. I'm so confused. What is putting counters on this card? I don't know. Oh! Because it's all creatures types, it's also in a mass creature, which means it's getting the counters. Oh, weird. Oh, I see what's happening now. Okay, well, um, if we play this, it gets bigger, so we'll just resolve. Resolve. Uh, yeah, take action. We're gonna make a gigantic creature next time it comes down. I think they did that so that I can't sack this to get rid of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But next turn I can play this and my go for the throat and get rid of it. They can attack in if they want. I'm not going to block. Maybe I should, actually. Maybe I should. Okay, they're not going to block. Um, this is going to be one of the only targets we have for this, so let's just do it now. Yeah, I know. You get bigger. I swear I'm not this bad at magic. Okay. Um, well. Yep. You got it. How many cards left in your deck? 63? You stole quite a bit. Get out of here. Finally. So now we have an 1818. <laughs> um yeah, they got a block. So we can just play our Sauron again. Oh, they're going for it. So they can't play they can't play their commander now. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. They need nine mana. So if we just kill this, we win. Guardian Idol. So they can... Oh, it comes into play tap, though. So that doesn't work. Okay. They play out their hand. Create a treasure. I think we got them. Equip one. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. I can't target it now. But we can... Um... Oh, our orc will have hex proof. Okay. Let's look in their... Let's look in their graveyard. See if they got anything good. Especially a legendary permanent. Well, legendary creature or planeswalker. Right? That's all this targets. Of course, I have zero timeouts. Um, okay. So we can make our, we can make our creature gigantic. I think they have enough mana to play Sauron next turn, so we gotta play this. So that we have something to sack in order to kill it again. I think that's the way we gotta we gotta do this. They can't really activate the one ring anymore, because they're just gonna die. We can just outlast them. So we have a 28-28. <laughs> they got a block.
Now they can equip... They can place it on and equip it. To get, um... To make it hexproof, but we're just gonna attack with a 2828. You can draw cards if you want, man. All I gotta do is wait two turns and you're dead. Uh huh. Equip the boots. They're gonna target my 2828. Okay. But I just have to outlast you. Ozolith? Sure. Too bad we can't get Lightning Bolt with Breach. That would be hilarious. Okay. Well, what do we have in our graveyard? We could get our flyer, right? And then we could protect it. We could get this guy back too, which is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So that's not a bad call either. We just have to survive two turns, that's it. Because this thing will kill them. So, we have enough mana to breach and something else. But we should probably just hold up Spell Pierce. I think breach gives us the most value. Uh, resolve, again, the counters are going to go on Sauron. Oh... Yeah, that's probably the right creature for us to grab. We can get... Okay, so we can take their shield rid. And our... This guy, because it's a flyer. And pass. And now they draw a card and die. Death is on the stack. Yeah, okay. Double death is on the stack. <laughs> uh-huh, do it. Go all the way. Whoop, 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 whoop. All of your cat nine lives are on the deck. Uh... Sure, return it to my hand. Do you have an exile all... No, you don't. Okay. There are some spells that exile all spells and abilities from the stack. I don't remember if any of them exist on Arena, but that would have been clutch if he drew into that. So maybe that's maybe that's what the opponent was trying to do. Um, but yeah, I don't... You have to have some kind of like... Exile all... You know, abilities and spells from the stack. So that's a very specific card that you'd have to draw into. Anyway, GG. Oof. Hey, we beat probably the best Grixis deck in the format, so hey, <laughs> I will take that. Take that any day. And they played well, too, like, they didn't, uh, they didn't miss a beat, their deck was popping off, they had a billion, uh, they had so much card draw, and I goofed so many times in that, <laughs> that game. With the cut down and the heartless act. Oh, man. All for you wonderful people to watch and critique me on. <laughs> uh, okay. Deck review. 
I personally like this deck. I think it'd make a great commander deck. I know I say that every episode, but really, it's a cool commander card. Um, I think you could... You, they're, like, what we're trying to do with this deck, you could really make work in commander. And you'd have the time and freedom to get it going. Um, especially with three opponents, if you have, if you're milling all them, you can imagine like, I mean, you saw we made a 28, 28, right? Imagine with three or, you know, two extra graveyards worth of instants and sorceries. I mean, it's not, you know, that far fetched to say that the mouth of Sauron could come down in commander and you instantly have a 40, 40 or something like that. Um, so very cool card. And again, I love uncommon legendary creature commanders because they are budget friendly you know i'm sure this card in paper costs like 20 cents you know so if you really wanted to like build a commander deck around this you could probably get a foil version of this card as your commander maybe even with alternative art and it's like a dollar or less right and then you can build a super cool deck that's like half demir control half mill you know with a sprinkling of uh, you know, cool creatures that are normally stone cold unplayable, but work really well in this deck. Um, I think that's, I think that's a really cool build. But as far as like the historic brawl build of this, I mean, if you really want to get wins, like I said in the intro, you got to build a Demir control shell and then, you know, do kind of the same stuff, but you would get rid of all these quirky creatures, right? I mean, they're cool, but they don't really advance the game plan. Paying two mana to make the opponent mill two cards is okay value, but it's nothing compared to like the, the Teferi's Tutelage type cards, which passively make them mill every turn, essentially, and encourage you to draw extra cards like with Teferi's Ageless Insight so that in, in the one ring, right? So that you're drawing a bunch of cards, which also mills the opponent, which also keeps your control stuff up, you know, but... I don't want to make every deck into a control deck. It's just, it's not, it's too vanilla, you know? Like, when a, when a commander actually calls for control, like Baral, right? Counterspell tribal deck, that's fine. You know, that's what the deck's designed to do. I just don't feel like this card is, is like designed for Demir control, and so I just didn't build it that way. Um, and of course, we didn't get some wins because of that. Also because of my awful playing, but, you know, if you want a consistent wins and that's what you're here for, you build a Demir Control Shell. Um, otherwise, this deck, this deck was really fun. Obviously, some of the slots, the card slots are flexible. So if if there's stuff in here that you think should be that you didn't see, feel free to swap some stuff out. Uh, Necroponents is a little awkward. It's like the best black card draw enchantment, but it doesn't actually draw cards. So it doesn't trigger... Uh, trigger? <laughs> trigger is what I'm trying to say. Uh got close to a word I well, definitely shouldn't say, but I, <laughs> I meant to say trigger, uh, trigger. That's funny. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't trigger card draw because it, it says exile the top card of your library face down and then put that card in your hand, which is not drawing cards. So, um, it doesn't trigger this. It, so, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, go with Teferi's Ageless Insight because it's not drawing cards. So this is a little awkward, unlike the One Ring and the Magic Mirror, which do draw cards. So maybe this is a swap out. I don't know. Um, but there are definitely some really good mill spells and other Demir cards on Arena that I just don't own, so they're not in the deck. So if, you, if you're wondering why, like, hey, why didn't you put this staple in? Well, it's probably because I haven't cracked it because it's a Mythic, then I... You know, I have like one mythic in my bank right now. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't own every card on Arena. I own a lot of them, but I don't own every single one. So uh, you can just safely assume that if it's an obvious staple that I missed, um, it's probably just because I don't own it. So feel free to include it if you think that makes the deck better. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the deck breakdown. I really liked building this deck. It was fun something different, something different for Demir to do other than just, you know, control and Rusko and those types of things. Um, 
that's the other thing too like if you're going to build a control shell with this to just get, make this work you might as well just go play rusco because it's a way better commander right so if you're like looking for wins this is like the wrong commander in general just to be picking you know just go play rusco if you want to play demir control right uh but for people trying to do something new definitely check this out um it's a cool card it's an uncommon so it's not going to take one of your rare or mythic wild cards um you know so yeah have fun with the deck Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribed already. If you haven't, please do right now. Thanks for watching till the end. I'll see you guys in the next one later.